En el centro de la pampa vive un pimiento Sol y viento pa' su vida, sol y viento Sol y viento pa' su vida, sol y viento Bonjour, je m'appelle Patrick Barnard. Bienvenue à la 110e édition du Piment. Hello, I am Patrick Barnard. Welcome to the 110th edition of the Pimento Report. It is Thursday, June 23rd, 2016, and there is a very important environmental story in today's Globe and Mail. I'm going to read it to you, if I may, just a little bit of it. The headline is interesting. It says, Quebec hopping mad over federal intervention to protect frog. The story is by Daniel Leblanc, and he's writing it from Ottawa. The beginning reads as follows. A tiny frog has sparked the first Quebec, Canada squabble of the Trudeau era. The Liberal government in Ottawa has issued an emergency order under the Species at Risk Act blocking part of a residential project south of Montreal to protect the habitat of the western chorus frog. This is an enormously important step. And there's another story in the Globe and Mail of today, an inside page that's also important. The headline is, after long wait, eight species deemed at risk. What the article says inside is that the Harper government uh, over a decade really had brought this whole process of protecting species and their habitat to a standstill. But now with the Trudeau government and its uh, most recent interventions, uh, these are signs that a moribund federal process for protecting vulnerable wildlife is slowly creaking back into action. That's extremely significant here in Montreal and touches on uh, the story that's in today's Pimento, which is in both French and uh, English, by the way. I have uh, said for some time here in the Pimento report that the wetlands, the wet meadows of Pierrefonds, 185 hectares of them, are extremely important and represent journalistically a very big story a story with hidden elements to it that will be very surprising, I think, when they come to the surface. Uh, this week, on Monday, June 20th, David Fletcher, the Vice President of the Green Coalition, and I were at Montreal City Council, and we were questioning this City Council here about these wetlands. David Fletcher, on uh, June 20th, uh, used a symbol to highlight the need that we have here in this city to start really protecting the environment and to protect habitat. He talked about a controversial project to put granitic tree stumps uh, in the middle of Mount Royal Park here in the city. And he used that symbol to talk about the need for protecting the environment here. I followed Mr. Fletcher and I posed the question, as to whether Montreal has the courage to really start moving on the environment and make this city an environmental leader instead of an environmental laggard. Prochain intervenant, Monsieur David Fletcher. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Good evening. Mr. Council, uh, I'm here uh, this evening to uh, speak uh, to the issue of, of some artworks on uh, Mount Royal. Um, this council in the AGLO recently announced its intention to spend 3.45 million, excuse me, to install 27 granite items on Mount Royal. Uh, they're represented as a cross between uh, street furniture, signage, and design. And uh, these strongly represent tree stumps. Um, the power of urban semiotics, and by that I mean the messages that the cityscape conveys to its citizens um, and to the future and to the world at large, uh, is profound. Uh, making a, a statement with these objects is clearly the city's intent, and to me that is a real problem. Uh, tree stumps represent the deadly human assault on the very basis of environmental health and integrity 
in our region. The magnificent, iconic forests of our region have, over the last 375 years, been nearly eradicated. Uh, this is not something that we should be celebrating at next year's anniversary celebrations, au contraire. This is Mr. I Fletcher. have one more statement to make and then I'll pose the question. Please. In a time of serious climate change and precipitous biodiversity loss locally and worldwide, citizens will want to see our city represented in a sensitive, serious, and proactive light. Cannot this council reverse its egregious error in approving tree stump art for the mountain and devote the monies rather to enhancing its natural patrimony through acquiring ecologically valuable sites? Question. Monsieur Ménard. Bonsoir, Monsieur Fletcher. Bonsoir. Euh, J'ai eu l'occasion à plusieurs reprises de vous rencontrer. Euh, je vous engage à beaucoup, beaucoup de prudence dans vos affirmations. Alors, ce dont on parle essentiellement, c'est de donner l'occasion, à travers des haltes repos, à nos citoyens. Il y aura 30, en, 30 endroits euh, où il va y avoir des haltes repos où ça va être possible d'admirer la vue ou un paysage particulier sur le Mont-Royal. On parle de construire des endroits qui vont être assimilables à des belvédères et on parle d'avoir des cartes de référence. Tout ça en lien avec beaucoup de consultations qui ont été faites au cours des trois dernières années. Il y a plusieurs groupes qui ont été engagés. Comme vous savez, c'est aussi un projet qui a reçu l'appui d'Héritage Montréal. Alors, je vous engage à être extrêmement prudent dans vos affirmations. Si jamais vous ressentez le besoin qu'on vous fasse une présentation avec les services, nous le ferons avec grand plaisir. À plusieurs reprises, on vous a mis en contact avec les services des grands parcs dans différents dossiers. Je le ferai avec plaisir, c'est ce que vous souhaitez. Il y a eu, je vous engage aussi à lire un article de la presse que j'aurai probablement l'occasion de poser en conseil, mais c'est un excellent projet qui va permettre à, aux Montréalais d'apprécier davantage le Mont-Royal, et c'est ça l'intention qu'il y a derrière le projet. Right. So question, so Just uh, my, a second um, uh, question, and, and uh, it's uh, quite contrary to what Mr. Menard has given us uh, as intent. And we have here um, a petition. Uh, Amanda Coburn from the Plateau is the person that uh, initiated uh, this this uh, act, um, act with this this uh, uh, petition. Uh, that points out that 2,547 people in the plateau, just the people she's been able to reach, and people around Montreal Island, are decidedly opposed to this project. I'd like uh, to ask if I might present this to Council, and I'd like to add that there are 42 pages of commentary that I do hope the City will seriously read and, and take cognizance of. Yes, you can leave your petition. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Thank you. Notre prochain intervenant, Mr. Patrick Carey Barnard. Uh, bonsoir, Monsieur le Président, membre du Conseil. Uh, alors, j'aimerais poser une question au sujet de la vocation internationale de la Ville de Montréal. Euh, D'après l'organisation EcoWatch, les dix villes, les dix villes mondiales les plus vertes sont, et je vais les nommer, Copenhague, Amsterdam, Stockholm, Vancouver, Londres, Berlin, New York, Singapore, Helsinki, Oslo. Je pense, et il y a beaucoup de gens à Montréal maintenant qui pensent la même chose, je pense que Montréal peut faire partie d'un tel groupe, mais ce n'est pas possible à notre vitesse décisionnelle actuelle qui est, d'après moi, glaciale. Notre propre objectif pour les espaces naturels et verts conservés est maintenant un minimum de 10%. C'est depuis un an que ça existe, cet objectif. Mais on est à 6% des espaces naturels préservés à Montréal, sous l'île. On a besoin de 4% de plus, ça veut dire 2500, 2500 hectares de plus. De Et la question, M. Barnard? Oui. 
Les prairies humides de Pierrefonds représentent 185 hectares. Le dernier grand bloc des espaces naturels sur l'île de Montréal, c'est le temps de joindre le rang de Vancouver, Londres, New York, en protégeant et préservant les prairies humides de Pierrefonds. La ville de Montréal est-elle prête à prendre cette décision? Une question, M. Ménard. Ben, deux commentaires, si vous me permettez. Je pense que dans la précédente administration, il y a des gens qui étaient sceptiques. Ceux que mon collègue de Souza pourrait témoigner qu'il y a quelques années, il y a des gens qui se présentaient aussi au Conseil de ville en disant que l'objectif d'atteindre le 6 était hors de portée de réalisation. Et pourtant, on est rendu à 5,89. On va l'atteindre dans les prochains mois sans aucun problème. Et je suis convaincu que l'objectif de 10 on a sur la planche à dessin une vingtaine de terrains que nous souhaitons acquérir. Nous sommes en attente d'une confirmation du gouvernement du Québec pour l'extraordinaire projet de paysage humanisé euh, dans l'arrondissement euh, de l'île bizarre saint geneviève Alors, nous avons beaucoup de projets sur la table pour euh, aller vers la fin de cet objectif-là. Concernant Pierrefond, euh, au-delà du fait qu'il y a une consultation publique qui va s'engager dans les prochaines semaines, comme vous le savez, c'est un projet qui est équilibré pour 183 hectares de développement. Il y a à peu près 180 hectares de protection. Alors, on pense que, euh, malgré le fait que certains collègues opinent du bonnet, nous croyons que c'est un projet qui est équilibré. Complémentaire, M. Barnard. Oui, euh, j'aimerais euh, poser euh, ma question complémentaire en anglais. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, this is not the first time that I've come to speak about these things here or to ask questions. Uh, I'm a Montrealer, but I grew up in New York City. I know London very well and Vancouver fairly well as, as well. I honestly believe, as Sylvia Allemark was trying to say in a meeting last week with you, Monsieur Menard, only she didn't quite get to this, that Montreal can step up to the plate. New York does not have the St. Lawrence River. It does not have an island which is so important for migratory birds. Very few cities have our natural heritage. And we can become a world ecological city, but it will have to take the courage to do so. Monsieur Manard, est-ce que la ville a le courage de devenir une ville écologique pour tout le monde? dans le monde entier. Mr. Kopman. Uh, Mr. Menard, we, uh, as indicated by my colleague, Mr. Menard, um, we feel that we can hit the 10% mark for uh, land protection. Uh, it, that's what it was identified in the schéma d'éménagement. Uh, as you well know, the land at Pierrefonds West It was not included for conservation in the schéma de ménagement. It was included as residential development. And so uh, we feel that we can do a balanced development, respectful of, um, of natural space uh, in, uh, in Pierrefonds West. And I might add that you yourself made reference to the fact that our goal is for 10% of land protected. But if uh, there's an additional 17%, if one includes the, uh, the shoreline of the city of, uh, of the island of Montreal. And so when one adds the land and the aquatic component, we're well on the way, I think, to uh, perhaps not joining the list that you mentioned uh, uh, in tomorrow or, or, or the day after, but uh, I'm convinced under the excellent leadership of both Mayor Kader and, uh, and uh, Real Menard, we'll, we'll get into the, uh, into the top Uh, cities around the world for the protection of green space. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bernard. Merci. 